Why Trump? Why now? Why this? Let's answer those in reverse order. Why this? Because they haven't been able to find anything else. They have been scouring everything about this guy's life for at a minimum of seven years. And they just can't find it. They can't find anything, which should be easy to find something illegal that this man has done that they can prosecute. And they just can't do it. They've been teasing it the whole time and they can't do it. And this is it of all the grand implications of taxes and all of that shit that they have said, this is the best they've got. So that's why this, why now? My personal theory is that we are just over 18 months from October, but close enough to call it a wash. October of the 2024 election cycle. These types of prosecutions often have a prosecution cycle that lasts 18 months. Often. And so the idea is right up to the election. First of all, you've got this covering Trump through most of that time. Negative press. Now, now Trump could demand a speedy trial and speed things up a little bit. Could still be six months. Could really be six to 12 months. I mean, kind of depending on speedy trial isn't the, the simplest. It's not just a math formula. There's other shit that can cause delays. But let's just go with, for now, he doesn't exercise a speedy trial and you've got 18 months till the election. That covers this as this looming sort of Damocles over his election campaign. And really what that's designed to do is to keep the non-committed potential Republican voter away from Donald Trump. Oh, he's a criminal. He's a felon. He's charged. He's going to be convicted. Of course, been hearing he's going to be convicted for years now, but he's going to be convicted. It's going to happen. And if you donate to him, if you support him and you're donating to a criminal, supporting a criminal, and he's not going to win and everything's going to be bad. That's why now, in my opinion. So why Trump? A couple reasons. Politicians have done illegal shit forever. I always do illegal shit. Um, we often do illegal shit. You, me, everybody. We don't try to, but we end up doing illegal stuff. Uh, on Joe's stream, someone mentioned Three Felonies a Day is a book that people should at least skim at some point. And the, the proposition of the book is that the average American commits on average three felonies a day, uh, most of the time unintentionally. And they go unpunished. But the, the idea is that the structure of the law is such that it is intended to catch you in something so that the government can exercise that as control over you when they need to. At their convenience, they can charge you for whatever. They'll find something. They've always got something to get you on. So all politicians have some skeleton that could be exploited, of course. But we typically don't do it. And in my opinion... There's a decent reason for not doing it unless a couple factors are filled. It typically behooves the political process to ignore minor infractions or difficult cases involving your political opponents for the purpose of preserving a peaceful transition. Now, I know that people are allergic to that phrase, peaceful transition, after 2020, because of the notion that the 2020 election was, that's what happened. And the unwillingness of the courts to look into fucking anything about it because of this notion of protecting the peaceful transition of power. But please do not conflate. Please do not conflate the idea that preserving the sanctity of our vote is of the same caliber as pursuing potentially petty criminal infractions of our political enemies. Those are very, very different questions. And so for the process of, or for the principle of preserving the peaceful transition of power, we have throughout the history of this country overlooked relatively minor infractions of law relative to the presidency 
on both sides of the political spectrum for the purposes of just not murdering people in a civil war. Because any prosecution that is perceived as a political prosecution of one of the most popular people in the country, reminder that they got at least half the country to agree with them at some point, poses the risk of having that half of the people rebel. Now, what is the danger, really, of a political prosecution? The danger is that we become a tribalistic nation akin to African nations that have been locked in political civil wars for generations. This idea of blood for blood, blood cycles, you prosecute one party, they get, they finally get back in power. They prosecute the other party who is keeping them down. The prosecutions don't become sufficient to save the masses or to save themselves. And they end up using machetes and chopping people up. And while some people are accelerationists and want civil war, I'm not personally at the point where I want to be chopping people up with machetes on behalf of a politician. Cause I think that by and large, almost all politicians are scumbags, but they are our scumbags. We get the choice to put them into fucking office or we're supposed to. So that goes back to that enfranchisement versus disenfranchisement of my right and my political power that I have. It's granted to me by the fucking constitution to participate in this government to the extent that I'm able to and willing to. I get to do it. And if you take that away from me, then you're fucking lame. But I'm not necessarily willing to go to the killing fields over an elected official at this point. And I really don't want my hand forced into that shit. But why Trump? Here's the answer to that question. As best I can discern it, Trump is the boogeyman. Trump is where all fears of Democrats are manifest. Trump is where all perceived failures of jilted Republicans are manifest. Trump is the boogeyman to the people who are opposed to him. And you've all seen this. It's called Trump derangement syndrome. And it affects our friends. It affects our families. It affects our classmates, our work colleagues. Anyone and everyone. You never know who it's going to affect. You've, you've seen this. You've seen this. People you like, people who agree with you on your politics, for whatever reason, got a bug up their ass about Trump. And they spent every day obsessing over what he did and complaining about it. Every day. I'm sure you guys have encountered this. I have. Friends, family members, or whatever. And it's like, and, and these are people I agree with. Like, we, we're eye to eye on 99.9% .9 of issues. They didn't like his use of words. They didn't like his crudeness or whatever. Whatever it was that got them. And they got so fucking mad. And they spent every day and every time I would talk to these people. Do you see what Trump said? Like, I don't care actually what Trump said at all. Like, I, you guys should probably discern by now that while I liked what Trump did as president, I mean, overall, I wasn't, obsessed with what he did like or uh, on the average day i'm like not following him constantly so the, I, I would encounter these people who we would agree so much on everything and then trump comes along and i can't talk to them anymore about any issues ever again because every conversation is the same yeah but did you see what he said no why did you see what he tweeted i don't follow him on twitter like my Twitter is for dick jokes. And they're like, well, but you, you didn't follow what Trump said on Twitter. It's like, he, he tweeted like 58,000 times yesterday. No, I didn't follow it. It was insufferable. It was unbearable. And we all saw that. That's why Trump. Trump is the boogeyman. And the people who don't like him are so convinced. They're convinced that he ruined America. They're convinced that Donald Trump's presidency was an objective failure. They're convinced that Donald Trump put the U.S. in a lower status in the world, that Donald Trump is responsible for everything that happened bad after his presidency and probably before. 
So those are the answers to why Trump, why now, and why this.